Guys, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on restoring an ax head. There's a huge movement of buying old axes and restoring the head. So this is a hewing hatchet my wife picked up at a yard sale for me for a dollar. So it's a really good deal. It's actually, um, it looks like it's a higher quality hewing hatchet, okay? We have the bent bit. Uh, the bit is in really, really good shape. Um, the backside wasn't filed at all, at least it doesn't look like it was. There's a little bit of damage around the eye where they hammered this in, but this is set for a left-handed user anyway. So I'm gonna have to pull this handle off. The handle's not proper. This was made from just an old ax handle uh, that was cut short and grinded down. So it's, it's not the way I'd want it anyway. I have another ax handle off to the side. So how do we clean up rusty or painted ax heads? Well, the easiest thing to do is take your angle grinder with a wire wheel brush. It comes off really quick, cleans the metal up really nice, and you can normally, if there's any type of markings on here, you're gonna be able to see them. This works good for rusty metal um, ax heads too, or tools. Take that wire wheel and uh, just grind it. It'll come off fine. You're not gonna hurt the metal at all. You can use sandpaper, it just takes a lot longer. Uh, some guys will soak this in things, stuff like that. You don't have to. Wire wheel brush on angle grinder, 10 minutes, it's done. One tip I'm gonna say though, don't take these handles off when you get it. Use the handle in your vise, and it just makes it easier to set the ax at different angles, rather than having to pinch the ax head and move it and squeeze different parts of the metal, rather than beat the wood up. You know, we're gonna be taking this handle off anyway. So, safety glasses, safety first. We're good to go, let's get it in the vise. All right guys, so no, mar no markings that I could see as a now on this. People might say about heating this up because I'm grinding it that long. Uh, listen, it's not gonna change the temper heating it up to, it's not even near even lukewarm water, so we're fine. The head's all cleaned up. We gotta get out this wedge before we knock out the actual handle. You might be able to just get this handle off, but we're going to take the wedge out first. So what I found works absolutely best is basically just get a punch, okay, and I have a different one here, a little bit more stout punch that I grind it down more to a point, and then just a thinner um, one eighth inch punch. And what I'm going to do is just start to knock this punch. I go down this way, and then I'll start to knock it over to get an edge up. Then I'll work it this way and actually back it out just slowly. And that usually works pretty good for me. So see how that see how that's rising up? It's what we're looking for. Then I can always come in this back side, but I think I'm gonna just keep on letting it travel this way. since it's working pretty good, okay? All right, so you see how it's going back now? Tighten that down a little bit more. Again, you just gotta play around with this, guys, a little bit just to get in there and loosen this up. There's really no science to this. I think people get overly worked up. You just don't wanna beat up your ax head. Sometimes it takes a little bit, it'll get going. Then you can just grab it with a pair of pliers once you get it up. So that already worked its way up probably about an eighth of an inch. Maybe even a little bit more. 
That was a good one there. So you see I'm just working it back and forth. Very easy stuff. And this is how I get the majority of my wedges out. You can also, if it's a real thick wedge, um, use what they uh, dent remover for a car. You actually drill into this, screw it in, and then it's like a, a reverse style hammer. But uh, they cost money, chisels you can get just about anywhere. Real cheap, so. All right, that should be loose enough now. Grab an old pair of pliers that I have here. Whoop. See if we could just, wiggle, there we go, wiggle that out. So you can even see, if you look at that, I didn't damage that wedge up too much. And that's a pretty wide wedge for something like this. I'm gonna use a different one. So I could just grind those edges and uh, I have myself an extra wedge. So let's uh, look how we get this handle off now. All right guys, so the next step is to get this uh, handle off. What I like to do for this is I open up my vise, and vices are very important when you're working with these axe handles. It makes life a million times easier. What I'm basically looking for without damaging the axe itself is I'm looking to open up my vise so I have some bite on the back and front of my axe so there's some support there. So you see how that looks basically right now? So the back supported, front supported. I'm gonna just put an old shop rag around just to protect the metal on metal, but I know there's support there, so that's gonna drive down through. What I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna take a punch, again, just a punch that I bought at a hardware store, get a heavier hammer this time, and try to loosen that up. So you can see the punch basically drove in and the wood didn't go anywhere. So what we're gonna do is reevaluate, make sure nothing's binding up. I'm gonna just open this up just a little bit more for us, just like that. Again, I'm gonna set my punch in a new spot now and attempt to drive this in a little bit. So here's gonna be my guess. Whoever did this, epoxied this handle in. And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm chiseling away at these sides and the sides are not even moving, even where it's broke away from the ax. So, sometimes, you know, this is what's gonna happen. Don't get yourself all stressed out about it. It just takes time, guys. You know, it's hard to just sit down and say, oh, you watch a YouTube video and guys, pop these things right out. Oh, that's the only way it works. Well, I'm gonna tell you firsthand after doing a lot of these, that's not always the case. People do all kind of crazy stuff with axes, trying to get them to work and fit handles. So it's just gonna take more time. So we're gonna just keep on chugging away at it. Sooner or later, we'll get that. It's gonna pop right out the bottom for us. Again, like I said, all that I'm doing is keeping this supported, a little bit, not squeezing that handle too tight. And uh, I'm just taking this small round punch and I'm basically just chipping down the side. It's just a slow, slow process to get this freed up. Uh, there's always the option of burning this out, but uh, sometimes that can affect the temper of your tool. So I'm not in the field, I, I think that uh, I would rather sit and do this. I know I'm personally not damaging the tool by doing this. So I'm just gonna stick with doing this and get it going. So that's it. Again, you're restoring this, enjoy it while you're doing it. If you're trying to get this done in 15 minutes, uh, maybe you need a different hobby, you know? This should be enjoyable crafting with this stuff. That's out. Okay, so you see this little bit of damage here. That honestly was not from me. That was there before I uh, 
did anything with this. So it came out, the broken pieces all mangled in there. Uh, it seems like part of it was glued up in there, but the bottom half wasn't. So where I had to chip all that away, seems like there was some epoxy or something. Uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this back in my vise, clean up some of this edging. These little pieces here, these little lips, I'm actually gonna get rid of them. So I'm gonna take just a file and go in there and file that out, and then uh, we'll be ready to rehandle this. All right, so our ax head, again, like I said, that little bit of damage in there, you can see that right in here on each side. Somebody was hammering that last wedge in, destroyed that, but I'm, that's actually gonna be the bottom part now of my hewing hatchet. So uh, that's how I basically, in a nutshell, refurbish an ax handle. You saw we ran into a hiccup. I usually put that drift on top, pop that right out, it didn't work that way, okay? So I really wanna show you guys, I don't wanna edit stuff out and oh, I'm gonna get a different ax handle because this is gonna happen. You're gonna run into tough situations. You gotta just sit and work with them. So I just took my time and did it. These things take time, but this is the way I look at it. If I have to put an extra, I'm gonna say I put probably 15 minutes to 20 minutes extra into getting that handle out, I only paid a dollar. Well, my wife paid a dollar up for this, so it's worth it to me, okay? Rather than going and buying a new one. The steel seems real good. Uh, the eye's still in really good shape for the most part, other than where they damaged it at the top a little bit, but that's super easily fixable. And uh, you know, the bit is in very good shape, so that's really what I'm most worried about. So for a dollar, you can't beat it. So I'm gonna wrap the video up there. I'll probably do another video on how I actually handle this and then uh, we'll go from there with it. But I just wanted to show everybody, you know, using some more modern tools gets the job done really quick. A vise is super important for any type of ax handling and ax work. It just helps you out tremendously at your third hand. Uh, you could find that vise that I'm using, I actually bought at a flea market for around $60, and that's a post vise, so there's a leg on it and it attaches to your bench definitely worth the money. Even if you had to spend up to $200 on one of them, if, it, if all the parts are there and it works good, go for it. They're great vices. But uh, yeah, so that's how I clean up ax heads, put the handle on, final sharpening, donezo. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check us out over at coalcrackerbushcraft.com for our classes and products. And until the next video, stay in the woods, guys. Or your shop, if you're in your shop. Hey, either one, good with me.